In this video, we're going to talk about combinations. Now, the different important difference between permutations and commu, uh, combina combinations is that the permutations order matters. Right? I'm choosing people for certain roles in a play. The first person I choose is going to be the lead role. Right? The order of pe I choose for people is going to matter. It's going to be important. The number of anagrams, how I can rewrite, uh, how many ways can I rewrite this word, That's gonna, the order is going to matter because each ordering is uh, an anagram. Combinations order no longer matters. So here, especially, and that's why we go straight to the R combinations, is if I have a group of 100 people, how many ways can I grab five of them? The order isn't going to matter anymore, and that's a combination. So let's see more of this. Okay, so an R combination is a number of subsets. Now recall, sets do not have an order. Right, and that's the def that's the difference between a list or a word versus a subset or a set. So the number of subsets of size R that can be chosen from a set of n elements is called an R combination, and this is written like this. So this is a little different. And what's interesting, so this is different because remember permutation um, was written P. And R for permu permutation. This is a R combination. So this is an R permutation. This is an R combination. Um, and what's also interesting is how this is read. This is read N choose R. Okay. So once more, when we care about the order of the elements, we're talking about R permutations. So this would be P of N R equals N factorial divided by N minus R factorial. When we don't care about the order, we can divide this by the number of ways of ordering it. So I'm not somebody who really likes formulas. I really prefer to understand the formula so I could create it again because my memory is not that great. I don't remember formulas very well. I'd like to really understand what's going on so that I could rec recalculate the formula as needed. So for me, you can just memorize this formula, but hopefully this makes sense. And choose R is going to be the exact same as this permutations, except again, we're dividing by the number of ways of ordering it. Well, how many ways are there to order something? If you recall, it's going to be R factorial, right? If you have to order four books on a shelf, there's going to be four times three times two times one ways of doing it because there's four ways to choose the first book, three ways to choose the next book, and so on. So if we divide out those ways of ordering it, we're going to get the formula for our combinations, which is n factorial over r factorial times n minus r factorial, right? Because this part was how we calculated the number of r permutations, and then we divide by the R factorial. Um, important to note that in both cases, in both cases, R is between 0 and N. 
So in this example, we're also putting on a play um, in, from a classroom. So this is a similar to an example we did in a previous video, except here the order doesn't matter. For, uh, for example, what if this class was just chosen to be um, to provide bit players in the background? So we just need a bunch of people walking around the background. We need 10 students to loiter in the background. So it doesn't really matter. We don't have an order. There isn't going to be one person chosen as the lead actor versus another, that kind of an idea. Or maybe we pick 10 students, the order doesn't matter, and then later we'll decide um, how to assign them to roles. But the key thing here is that order doesn't matter. So, and that means we're going to have 30 choose 10, which is going to be 30 factorial. And again, we can write this out as um, the number of our permutations. So this is 30 minus 10 factorial divided by the number of, in the group, the number of ways of ordering those, which is 10 factorial. So if you work this out, You're going to want to do this probably 30 times 29. I'd leave the 20 factorial in there. And then you're going to want to have, I would probably choose to leave the 20 factorial alone. So I would have... I'd work this one out. Times 20 factorial. Cancel out the 20s then. And now you get to spend some time. Um, I would start by canceling more of these. For example, we can divide 24 by 8. And we're left with 3. We can divide 30 by 2, and we're left with 15. Actually, that would be better if we divided that by the 10, and we're left with 3. Divide any other even number, the 22 by the 2, and we're left with 11, and so on. And so you would divide all this out, and you'd simplify it as far as you can. And then, I'm not going to do all that. And then what, what you're going to end up with, if you work it out, is you're going to get, this is 30 million. 45,015. And because the order doesn't matter, this is actually going to be a much smaller number than if we did the order did matter, right? Because we're dividing out by 10 factorial. So it'll be 10 factorial bigger if the order matters. So that's this question down here. How many ways are there for a teacher to appoint students to 10 different parts in a play? Order matters there. So this, let's make this clear. Order doesn't matter to this problem. Here the order does matter. So in this one down here, order matters. So instead we're going to have the number of R permutations. It's going to be 10. And that's going to be very similar. It's going to be 30 factorial divided by 30 minus 10 factorial or 30 factorial divided by 20 factorial. And again, I'm going to let you figure, figure this out. But if you work it out, it's going to work out to 109 trillion, 27 billion, 350 million, 432,000, even. Okay, so you can see how when the order matters, it massively increases the number of ways there are to do it. So once again, you can just memorize these formulas, but I think it's useful to understand how the formulas work and why.